Kid, Gerald the Boss Man, show joined by friend of the show, Coach Brian Gregory, the South Florida Bulls. Coach, how are things down there in Tampa, man? Uh, as I always say, it's hard to have a bad day in Tampa, my man. It's uh, It's been great. It's been a uh, really, really positive move for, for me and, the, and my family and uh, really feel good about the the program that we're building and, and the steps that we're taking. So things are moving in a positive direction. And Coach, I want to start you off right there, Coach. Uh, I know we talked when we first got the job in South Florida. I just want to ask you, what's been the biggest difference for you in the program and the whole, oh, oh, how you have things running with staff, the program, the administration? What's the biggest difference for you from we talked last when you got hired in 17 so now as you want to win the CBI title here? Well, you know, I, I think, again, there was uh, – uh, an understanding of a commitment level. Uh, you know, we, this is a program that had lost 20 or more games in five straight years. Um, and when that happens, it's, it's more than just within the basketball department. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a commitment level all the way around. And, and we were able to kind of map out a game plan for us to build the type of program that we want from our academic support to the, uh, you know, marketing to, to promote the program, uh, the recruiting situation, the type of guys that we needed to recruit, um, you know, all those different things. And, you know, so much of that stuff in the rebuild, or in this case, almost a complete startup, you know, is under the, under the surface. But we've got, we, we got the commitment from the president to the athletic director to the community and so forth, and it, it put us in a good position to build a really solid foundation. And we got lucky, you know, that first spring recruiting class, you know, we were able to, you know, bring in nine new guys, six of them that were going to be able to be with us for a couple years. And those six guys have turned out to be really good players in their own right. And sometimes you got to you gotta get a little lucky, and, and we definitely were in that class. But at the same time, we brought in, tough, hard-nosed players that wanted to get better, and that's kind of been a good formula for us. Yes, indeed. And coaches, we can talk about exposure. When the CBI tournament, that's a great thing to win because your guys actually played through March, got extra confidence, able to, to get guys more experience, and you came out with a victory. You you ended the year on a high with a win, so that has to help you guys with the exposure experience you got and just they're feeling good as you go into these spring workouts here starting here real soon. No, no question about it. You know, I mean, obviously – we fire to play in the other tournaments, the four-letter tournaments, the AA, not the CBI, and so forth. But with where we were at as a program, it made sense in terms of our development. It really did. And as you said, we got to play more games. Uh, we get we get to the 24-win mark, which sets a program record. Uh, and guys are able to play meaningful games in March in that experience. Is going to you know help us down the line. When I looked at other teams and other programs that had played in this tournament, not won it, just played in it, and the success that they've had in the following years, to me at this stage of of our program, it's an absolute no brainer. And then to go out and win it made it even more worthwhile. And coach, I know you do. I know we're playing in that in a big tournament, but how cool was it to play? best two out of three uh they had to be a little side sight in there for you guys to play you know like a series man i can only imagine how the guys got pumped up there had, having to play, play like you know and the pros almost playing a little mini series there i probably made the guys really hyped for that man it it was interesting you know it's so different from a coaching perspective because you never play the same team three times in five days you know so it was interesting in terms of the adjustments that were made into getting three big adjustments you know depaul went with a really, really big lineup against us. And in game two, kind of threw us for a loop early in the game by playing a ton of zone, and they were, they're not a zone team. But, you know, it, it, it was it was good. The thing that was interesting is how physical the games got just because of the guys having a great familiarity with each other. And, uh, you know, at one point, the first member remember the Big East as DePaul is right now, and a lot of people were talking about it, reminding them of some of the Big East games from 10 years ago that were super physical. So, you know, it, it was unique. It, it kind of adds an own, an own flair to the championship. And for us to go on the road and win it at DePaul was something special for our guys. 
and culture I'm f- fired by game three you about knew everybody's calls uh you know you probably <laughs> know the signals the calls or did you go to some a, a dummy call here rather than say 20 for a two three zone you probably said something else for the two three zone so how, how did that part go yeah it was, it was interesting but as their point guard was making a play call our guys were calling out what play they were running you know so um uh, it was you know we felt going into game three that they were going to continue to play us a lot of zone so you know when you when you played Third, that was our 38th game of the season. When, when you get to that point, you can make some adjustments on some of your sets. And we altered a couple of our zone offensive big hitters, and they were successful that game because they weren't we called out to play and they were looking for something different. But it, it you know, it, it it's uh, you do get to a point though where you say, okay, this is what we're good at. This is what we're going to run. Go ahead and try to stop that whole kind of thing. And Chicago Blazers players are pretty big trophy this year. Helps you get this 24 win CBI title for those who may not be familiar with, with your team. They should, but I guys I am. Share with us some, some list of some guys who really played big roles for you this year. Well, you know, I think that, you know, the, the, the guys that had unbelievable years for us, Quincy Lupo is a junior for us. He's actually a transfer from Gardner Webb that made the NCAA tournament this year. And, uh, you know, kind of a 6 1 power point guard, but. He's uh, the only only guard in the country to lead the conference in both assists and steals. He was top five in the country in steals. And a matter of fact, even with Taco Fall from Central Florida in our league, McQuincy was named a defensive player in the American Athletic Conference. David Collins was a team all uh, AAC uh, member. He's from Youngstown, Ohio, sophomore guard. Uh, both him and McQuincy are, you know, Quincy will be a senior next year, David Jr., and David was the MVP of the CBI. Uh, Alexis Yetna is a freshman in Paris, France. He was the freshman of the year in our league. So we had a defensive player of the year and the freshman of the year and then two all-league players. All those guys down from that first spring that we that we brought in. So, you know, pretty good nucleus. And then one guy that had a tremendous, tremendous freshman year is Michael Dura. Right from Atlanta. He went to West Lake, a one state championship there. Um, you know, his seven foot freshman center, he had a tremendous year for us. Started every game. Uh, the last 15 games of the season, averaged nearly 10 rebounds a game. You know, he's a guy that, you know, before it's all said and done, and even maybe next year as a sophomore, is a consistent double double guy. So, he made great strides for us this year. It was obviously tremendous on the defense end, but we got our whole nucleus back. We returned nine out of our top ten scores, so we're in a good position to take another jump next year. Yes, indeed. And speaking of that, Coach, uh, your player development program, I know it's starting up here real soon. You got four hours now, which is better than when you had a two, so I know you have to have four hours to get on the court. Right. You can you know, work out to the guys. So what's the plan this year with your returning guys to kind of get them more – physically and mentally most prepared next year in the AAC because the American Conference, man, it's getting better by by the day with the coaches you had in the league and then the talent in the league now. Right. And that's, you know, this is, you know, this phase of the year, everything's about player development. Everything's about individual improvement. We don't, we won't do enough until we start getting ready to make our international trip at the beginning of August. So now it's getting better at individuals. You, know, you meet with the guys, you go over what they want in terms of what they think they need to work on to get better. You combine that with, with, our goals are for them, and then you kind of put together the, the individual plan because, you know, the one thing is we get to spend that time with them, which is crucial. But to be honest, to get to where you want to get, that's not enough time. They got to spend yes, time indeed. on their own. They got to get in the gym on their own. Uh, they got to work on their game on their own. But you got to be intentional when it comes to what you want to get done. You just can't be haphazard and just go in the gym and do nothing. You got to understand what you need to work on. And every day you got to have the, you know, the, the, the daily habits necessary to get to the point you want to get to. Those daily habits are what drive you. Uh, you got there, right, Coach? And also, Coach, with the league getting better. Like, we saw Houston play Kentucky very well. You see, I'm just, you know, but still, Mick Cronin did a great job. Now he's left probably to hire John Brennan to take his place. So you you also got Ron Hunter, a friend of you and ours, at Tulane now. So yeah. the, the, the coaches in the league is one thing. The talent's going to bring into the league is, is going to get better and better and better. So I've got these guys because you look at the league, how the league is getting growing. is basketball league. You know, Postseason-wise, yeah. how good the teams play. Postseason-wise, so you do it against a great team every night. Right, talked about in, in this league. That's the thing, you know, you said it best. If you get every, every program, every school in our league, they kind of built their national brand on the shoulders of the basketball program. You look at Memphis, Houston, South Florida, UConn, 
Wichita State, Cincinnati. Not saying that their football programs aren't good, but when you think of Houston, you think of five slam and jamma. When you think of UConn, you think of the national championships. When you think of, you know, you go down the list, SMU, Central Florida, you know, all those different things. They've all got Beta Temple all on, you know, on men's basketball or the basketball programs. And so we do have a great basketball conference. Four teams in the NCAA tournament this year. Um, we will become a league that has, you know, gets five or six bids. You know, like here on the verge with about three weeks left in the year. If we could have finished a little, we would have been a conversation. So it's, it's, it's that type of league. As you said, I'm going to do a cool job to lane with it. You're just a tremendous, tremendous hire. We know Penny is going to do a great job at Memphis. You know, you go down the list and you got some guys that have had great success either where they're at or at other places as coaches. And it's a great conference to recruit to because it is truly like an American conference, meaning we go from all the way up to Yukon, down to Tampa, all the way out to Wichita, Tulsa, and then down into Texas. So there's a lot of space in between for us to recruit. And the advantage to. that you, Johnny, and Ron have is you all know that Georgia here in Atlanta is a great background for great talent, diamond and rough talent that make it overlooked by Georgia and Tech even to a degree, or, it's, or Alabama, Auburn, you can still get those guys and say, hey, we, we, we are a great conference ourselves. It might be able, so you can still play and get your name out there. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, like I said, you know, we, we have Michael Dorr from the Atlanta area. He started every game for us as a freshman. We have Jameer Chaplin coming in who I think was, you know, one of the best, if not you know, just had a tremendous senior year, one of the best players in the state, won a state championship as a junior, lost it as a senior. It comes from a winning program uh, at Meadow Creek. Just, you know, just an unbelievable player. Fits exactly how we're going to play. He's going to have a great career here. So we're going to keep recruiting the Atlanta area and the entire state of Georgia because we do have a lot to offer. Great academics, great opportunities here in Tampa. And, uh, you know, a program that's on the right. Gregory, I'm so happy for you. I know I loved you when you was at Tech. I'm glad you're doing, still doing well in South Florida. We'll definitely be cheering for you guys in the AAC there. We'll definitely talk to you again down the road, Coach. Have a great summer, man. Look forward to talking to you in the fall, man. Till the tears run down from my eyes, Lord, somebody, ooh, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Alexa, play hits from Queen. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. All right, folks, back in the the Boss Man Show. We have a former Atlanta Hawk here with us. He's now the coach of Vanderbilt. The Commodore is up in Nashville. Coach Jerry Stackhouse. Stack, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, man. Just, you know, obviously, last couple busy last few days man things kind of finally settle in a little bit now but it's, but it's great man really excited to be here in nashville and be a part of the band really you know commodores hey stack what did it mean to you to have malcolm turner come come to you man and want you to lead his program he's he's he knew you from your time with the raptor 905 in g league he knew what you was all about and him to come tab you to be the man lead the program going for his first big hire how does it make you feel how does it feel like the vanderbilt administration believing in you and malcolm as well man i'm really just appreciative of it, man you know malcolm's a you know smart you know really smart guy man i had the opportunity to earn a lot of respect for him and how he was able to grow the G League and, you know, and do different things whenever, you know, we raised issues that, you know, were important to us. He was always there to, to address them and, and make things right for us. And, you know, so and then when he, you know, reached out to me about this job, man, it's like, yo, you know, obviously I felt like I was on a trajectory to, to get an NBA job, but with, you know, him, you know, they really sought after him to come and, and be the face of, uh, this uh, of this whole institution as far as the athletics department, and he even has a seat at the table, you know, in, in, on the chancellor's office. He's also a vice chancellor, so um, you know, when he reached to me about about doing it, I just couldn't really say say no. Man, it's just a great opportunity for me to can you know come to a, one of the best institution academic institutions in the country and and start a program, you know, that has really been down. Uh, you know, then you know, obviously had a, a bad year last year, and now I have an opportunity to come in and, and build something that that could last for a long time. So I'm excited about that. 
And Stack, you would probably the best conference for basketball for his coaches' names right now for all the guys you got in the league now. We've now had Muss, got Nate Oates down there, had yourself, man. All got, of course, Cali, Kentucky, Bruce Pearl made to the Final Four, man. You, the SEC has a lot of great coaches and a lot of great teams going to be good competing, eating each other up next year, I see already. Yeah, man, it's, it was a lot of movement this year and, and, and us, but, you know, it's just we're ready just to kind of go and compete, man. No, let, it, let it all hang out. You know, great, great coaches, great league, high, you know, high level players. You know, had you know Bruce Pearl was able to get his team to a final four this year. So, you know, we definitely got our work cut out for us. But we're going to approach it the same way we did nine oh five, and you know, and try to try to build a culture and, and then the winning and kind of take care of yourself from there. You kind of led me to my, my next point here, Stack, is the fact that you showed you can develop players. You coached the developmental league, the G League. And in college, now you're developing young men who want to probably play in the NBA overseas, max them out for what they're going to be. So I feel like you've showed it already as a head coach. You can you can coach at a developmental level and develop guys, make them play well and buy in your system and do the, play, the, play the right way and win, coaching yeah. in your way. Yeah, I mean, I think that, that's it, man. Just understanding that it's a it's a process, you know. Even with those those teams, like we had a good team that first year. We got off to a pretty good start, but the second year it wasn't that wasn't the case. You know, we had fifteen totally new new pieces. We started out four and ten, and you know, just had to work our way into becoming a good team. But you know, we were consistent with our message, consistent with uh, our approach, and, and then, like I said, that's the way we're going to approach this is the, the same way, man. Knowing that it's um, you know, but I, I met with our guys today uh, for the first time individually. You know, we met together as a group. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's a talent, man. These guys are excited. So I'm really, really happy to be able to coach them and, and, and figure out what we what we can do. I mean, you know, obviously there's, you know, it's a lot. It only, only can go up from how they had finished last year. And But I don't think their spirit is broken and, and feel like we can can really accomplish something, can can, can and have an uptick this year. That's what I didn't notice about that group last year, Stack, was that they were still close together. They never gave up on each other. They was going through a hard time, but you could saw it on the bench. Those guys still click to each other. You can feel the energy for one another, how they loved each other still, though that adversity and that hard time. So for you coming in now, being able to come here in this spring, get those guys, give them, a, give them that little boost of energy, show them what you're about. And they probably know who you are because of you your name. If they basketball, they know who you are. So I think that helps as well because they know you've been successful in the NBA as a player. Maybe been successful as a coach, and now you're their coach, can help them reach heights they want to reach now. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of high character guys. I mean, obviously, we have Vanderbilt, so it's a lot of smart kids, too. You so got there, right? I just think that <laughs> the fact that they you know, high, high character guys, they really, you know, they, they didn't get down on themselves and, and still try to find a way to compete. And it's just about bringing a little more structure, a little more detail to how we do things. And I think, you know, you can tell the excitement just listening to. That you know, not, you know, not to take anything away from from Bryce Drew by all accounts, you know, has, has great success. That you know, at a stop at Valparaiso as as a coach, um, but you know, it's just we're going to have a little different approach, and, and 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 hopefully that you know that that fits you know what we need to do and and where we want to go. And Stack, uh, I think it's good you got this job early because you can implement your system now, and you get four hours work with them on the court before they. Go go out of here for the, for the summertime and come back with, with you guys. So I feel like that getting the job early helps you set set the tone for the spring and summer and fall. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of, I'm still you know uh, finalizing my staff. I mean, I got you know my staff together, but now it's just kind of the, the processes that you have to go through as far as going through HR and you know have find the contracts and doing all those things. So. But um, hopefully that turns over pretty fast so we can get in the, in the gym. These guys are, are rearing to go. You know, a lot of them are working out on their own in the gym. I was able to get a little break from doing a bunch of interviews and other things like that just to uh, get on the court with um, Aaron Naismith yesterday, man. And just, man, uh, that kid going to be a stud, man. He's going to be an absolute stud. You know, so, I mean, like when you got an opportunity to see some of the talent there, that you, you know, we know that we can get it done. He, I mean, he could be an all-league Type type performer in in you know in the SEC, so I'm I'm just you know happy to get going, happy to get my coaches in place that and start working with these guys, get all my you know ancillary staff in place to where we can really start start building and, and doing the things that we need to be successful. 
Because recruiting stack, are you going to try to be – I know the Vanderbilt standard is kind of higher than most schools in the SEC and in the South in the country. So what what guys are you trying to target? You would probably target those high school seniors and maybe international guys or a JUCO guy that fits the Vanderbilt mode. What, what are you going to be looking for in the recruiting game here going forward? No, I mean, I think, you know, you know it's obviously transfers and, and that could, could play – a role into you know being a part of what we're doing, but we're, we're going to try to build. Like I said, we got some pieces in place that are young that I feel that we could grow with, and you know give ourselves a chance to you know kind of. You know, I think the the model for us is like a, almost like a Virginia model, you know, where we got those guys that hang around for a few years and and be able to to be good in three or four years, and that way it gives it don't put so much pressure on our younger guys that are coming in. They can kind of you know, learn learn the way and and, and how we do things, and, and not a whole lot of pressure on them to perform right away. So that's the way we're looking at. It. Like I said, there's not a ton of pressure right now, but you know, you know me. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm I want to win. I don't want to you know use that as an excuse to to not come out and and have a successful year. I want us to come out with the mindset that let's let's do something special, and that's how we're going to approach it from day one. And I was talking, I was doing an interview about you on, on the game and here in Atlanta. I was trying to tell the guys that this is, how, this is how you coach. You coach hard on defense, but you adapt on offense. So you adapt your offense to who you have, but you're going to have a defensive system. But you're going to play hard defensively and play that side of the court like, 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 like world beaters, but you go adapt to what you got. And I said, Vanderbilt will do the same exact thing. He'll see what he has in, in, on that team and adapt it to what he has and run, and run it that way, but defend like hell every night. Yeah, I mean, that's defending has, has got to be our staple in who we are, you know, every night. So nothing changes with that, you know, how we play and our style and that. There's no exceptions on that. But like you said, you kind of look at your personnel, see what we got, and then we, you know, we build from there, you know, understanding that, you know, we got guys that can do things on the perimeter. You know, we're going to play on the perimeter. We got a guy that, that we can throw it down to on the block and do some things. We're going to do that as well. So just take advantage of guys' strengths. And let the let the offensive uh, identity identity kind of you know find itself, and not try to you know plug and play and put guys in spots that that you know that we feel that we just want to come in with a mindset. Let them come in and 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 be a part of the dictation of who we are. Non-conference wise, Stack, are you gonna try to play the guys on a little tougher schedule? Try to get them acclimated for for what you're gonna come in, in conference play there. You're gonna try to take it a little bit easier there, get them some confidence and wins there, and then and get them see what you got. Good SEC play. So I know that's kind of a tricky balance when you're a new coach. How are you gonna do that schedule? It can be hard, moderate, or a, a little soft there. Well, no, I mean obviously the, the schedule is already pretty much made. You know, coming into uh, this football game. Uh, that we, you know, so I'm just next probably going, you know, in the future we have a little more uh, leeway on how, you know, dictating what we want to do as far as schedule goes. But right now, uh, we, you know, we, you know, we're just sticking with the schedule. In the SEC, you have to, you know, be above, I mean, below 150. So, you know, we, we, we're there. We're kind of right around 140 something right now. So, but hopefully as the years go on and we're able to kind of build a little more continuity in what we're doing that we can get that number a little bit lower. And I want to, I know since you're a college coach now, I want to kind of ask you about how did Dean Smith recruit you and how are you going to recruit guys now knowing how Coach Smith brought you to Chapel Hill to play for him? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm coming in with the mindset of, uh, you know, come in and earn it. That's, that's, the way, that's the way I came in under Coach Smith, you know, not being promised anything. And, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I feel like I'm just a, almost a carbon copy from from him from the standpoint of uh, not coming in and telling guys that you know they're the greatest in the world and we're going to run into everything around you. You know, we want to, you know, our seniors are going to be the the leaders of our team and we want you to come in if you earn minutes and play, great. But if not, come in and learn from these guys and be able to. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we're able to get one and done, and that's a different conversation. But for the guys that, that we're recruiting and, and, and who they are from a high academic profile, I feel like we can have that message and it'll resonate with some of them. 
that's what I got for you, Stack. Is you know your former Tar Heel, fellow Tar Heel Vince Carter, forty two years old after being with the Hawks. You're twenty two, man. Uh, I know you're not that much older than Vince is, but seeing him still out there playing like he is, man, I know you're happy, happy for, for, for your guy. Think he still got a year left in him, man? Uh, yeah, man. Vince is doing a great job, man. Out there, proud of him. It's good to still see him out there. You know, running the floor, dunking, doing a lot of good things out there, man. So it's just, you know, I don't know. He got some special, special genes, man. Is all I can say because I know I'm, I'm, I'm a half court guy right now. <laughs> Hey, Coach, you still got to go out there and do some things. Man, I saw you on the court in Memphis, man. You can still do some things, man. I saw you, man. Yeah, man. You still, you still do some things out there. I, I start running up and down. It goes away fast, man. So just, but, but, no, it's, it's fun. I still enjoy getting out there with him and, and teaching guys and helping them. But, you know, no, I'm, I'm going to let Vince have that one. The NBA days are done for me. Hey, Stack, uh, I, I Nashville has some great barbecue, man. Make sure you go to Jack's Barbecue on Broadway, man. I've checked that out. It's some good barbecue. You'll love it, man. I'm telling you. I just want to give you that little tidbit. Jack's Barbecue on Broadway. You're I appreciate love it. you, man. It gets you a real plate or a shoulder plate. You can't go wrong with either one, man. <laughs> I got you, bro. I appreciate it, bro. All right, Stack. Talk to you real soon, but See you soon, man. Okay, brother. Bye. No doubt. It's Jerry Stack House on the boss, man. It's maybe the night that my dreams might let me know. All the stars are closer. All the stars are closer. Tell me what you're going to do to me. Confrontation ain't nothing new to me. You could bring a bullet, bring a sword, bring a morgue, but you can't bring the truth to me. Alexa, play Kendrick Lamar and Scissor. Okay. With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. All right, folks, in the Jar of the Boss Man show, we're joined by Adam Nelson of HoopDirt.com, a site I go to every day, the, the dirty in college basketball, every level. Adam, what's good with you, man? Nothing. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it, and I really appreciate you saying you go to HoopDirt.com every day. Um, you know, it's a busy time of year for us, and we love having, you know, people clicking around the website, love hearing that people are going to it. And I also appreciate you saying we covered it at all levels. You know, I know I do a lot of this. I talk about the Division One stuff, but Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA, Junior College, we got it all. You know, hirings, firings, rumors, jobs. That's a big one for coaches is jobs. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, we covered it all, and I'm glad uh, well, I'm glad at least you're going to it. Yes, indeed, man. Hey, because, you know, I do a lot of guys in the business, so I kind of keep an eye on what's going on with different guys I do around around the business. And I, I, I see you post something, I'm like, yeah, I know that guy. I know that guy. I know that guy. <laughs> Cabrera, I know the guy. Travis Williams, I know the guy. You yeah. know, like I see a lot of guys you post people about people I talk to and text with on a regular basis. I'm like, man, the dirt's yeah. out there on you, brother. <laughs> What's going on? Talk to me. <laughs> I hear you. So I use your site to, to get guys to talk to me off the record. So just don't think. <laughs> well, that's a good thing that we'll take that. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. So I want to start off with Kennesaw State. Now, Yep. I've heard Al Pinkins is out of it. I've really heard Desmond mm-hmm. Oliver. But I'm also hearing they're offering mm-hmm. a bad contract of three years of about 170000 and no Dobo. So I don't know who wants to take the yeah. job with that going like that. So what's your, what you know, Kelsey, I'll say dirt-wise. Yeah, no, I think you're, you're pretty right on where you are. Um, and it's really not – I mean, it's not the greatest job in the world. It's not paying a ton. It's not a long-term contract. It's definitely um, – the pool of money for staff is definitely an issue. And this has actually been dragging out for a lot longer than it should. Um, you know, I, I originally tweeted, you know, probably a week ago, you know, Al Pinkins and Des Oliver from Tennessee, like top two, hot, hot, hot. You know, I think Pinkins is out now. I don't know where Des Oliver stands. I don't know if he's going to offer or not and, and turn this down. But from what I hear, I mean, they're, they're kind of making a left-hand turn here. Mike Helfer from Valdosta State is involved now too, Division Two coach. So I don't know where this thing is going. Um, but, you know, look at a lot of these other searches that have kind of moved quickly. This one is not moving quickly. Um, and I think a lot of it is because it, it's probably not a great situation. Um, and, again, you, you know, it's the opportunity to become a Division One head coach. But, you know, a lot of guys got to look at it where, you know, is, is it a three-year gig and then you're done? I mean, you know, guys want to win. And, you know, is this a situation you can win? I, oh, boy. I don't know. And, it's, it's, you know, I don't know. But, you know, you, you get – and, again, from, from all the people I talk to, you know, it was Pinkins and Oliver, like hot, hot. Those are the guys. And now you start hearing some other names trickling, which to me, being in this business long enough means, you know, and a, whether they've turned it down or not, 
it's, it's going in a different direction right now. Exactly. And, you know, Kennesaw State should have money, but it's all they put all the money in football. It's right off the street from, here, uh, from Atlanta. It's in a good, yeah. good part yeah. of town. So you should be attractive, but you offer sure. net salary. That's an HBCU kind of salary. Like you would get at like Tennessee State or something like that or a school like that sure. would offer you that. But Kennesaw State, you're an A son. You, you're in that part of town. is very, very You don't have to be the football. So to me, a guy looking at like, really, what's going on here? Right, right. Should be able to win. I mean, again, you know, I talked to a lot of people, and I haven't been down there. A lot of people do, like you said, in a great spot, great recruiting area. You should be able to get it done. But looking at recent history, no one's gotten it done there. So, you know, I, yeah, they, they got to sink some money into that thing, I would assume. In Georgia State, or Rob Lanier is the new coach. Uh, who are you handling with him staff-wise, and will they keep my guy Travis, or will he be moving on? Yeah, I, I don't know what they're going to do with him. I mean, he's a, he's a Georgia State guy. So you'd think – you know, new head coach Rob Lanier would like to keep him or, or should keep him to, to keep a little continuity in that program. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen there. But I will tell you this, though, you know, Georgia State did hire a good one. Um, I think he's going to get it done there. Um, you know, he's obviously recruited at the high major level. Um, he's been a mid-major head coach before. Um, I, I think it's a, I just think it's a really good move for them, I mean, you know, especially with the, the year Tennessee just had. You know, he, he's had some success now as a high major assistant. I think just a really, really good move. And, and it's, you know, hard to replace a guy um like ron hunter who's won um who seems to have a pretty big personality and you know done good things at, at, at georgia state but i think that i really do think they got the right guy there and mercer where are you here staff wise down there with coach greg gary down there so mercer i can confirm and this just came we had this yesterday i think or the day before um bobby Cummer, who's an assistant at lamar He's going with him, and I think he'll be the associate head coach there. Um, other than that, I haven't heard anybody else. Uh, but again, in my mind, another good hire. I mean, look, you know, coming from a program that had a really good season, um, you know, really good X's and O's guy, a guy that can recruit. Um, you know, I think they, I think they made a good choice. Um, you know, obviously a little surprising with, with the with them making a change this season. Um, I think that surprised a lot of people, um, but I think you know bringing in the right guy who's going to win some games for them there will will help that. He's going to need to find him some Georgia guys because Macon is in middle Georgia. It's not a desirable mm-hmm. spot for kids to go. Well, Macon's not a small town per se, but it's not like where you're going to get guys yeah. who are going to Macon, Georgia. So you'll need some Georgia guys yeah. who know how to recruit middle and south Georgia because I, I, I doubt an Atlanta guy will willingly go down to Mercer if they can go to Georgia State or Kennesaw right in their backyard. Yeah. Well, and it's funny you say that because from what I hear, and I, you know, like I said, talking to a lot of people, going back to Kennesaw, it sounds like one of Al Skinner's biggest problems there was he didn't make the inroads in Georgia that he needed to he, he, and, and wasn't he getting those guys. He didn't. That's you know, true. So, right. So, it, 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 you know, so I think, you know, whoever gets that Kennesaw job, like they need to focus, you know, in Georgia right away um, and, and get those Georgia guys to go to Kennesaw because, you know, <laughs> you got a lot of good players down there. Um so I think that needs to be, you know, whoever gets that job, like a number one, bring on some Georgia guys. Um, if it's not a Georgia guy, bring on some Georgia guys and, and really just attack that state um, from day one. Exactly, because a lot of players here who get overlooked. Cause a lot of guys poach from Georgia for players, whether it be Auburn, Alabama, sure. a lot of North Carolina, Carolinas, they all come here looking, looking for players. So, hey, keep them at home. Yep. They, hey, we, we you still make it yeah. big here. Because with the A son, Case Alexander's gone to Belmont now. They're probably going to hire Brian Ayers, yep. what I'm hearing from up there. Yep. So, yep. that Lipscomb is not going to be like the powerhouse I don't think they were for a while. But you got Liberty. So, you can, if you get it, kill us all just right, you, you can probably compete for that title and get in that bid if you play, play your hand yep. the right way. Yeah, no, you're right. That's a very good point. I mean, I think, you know, you said, right guy, get some Georgia guys, definitely can compete in that league, you know, without a doubt. Now, what's up with this UCLA, man? That was just a, a train wreck after that, that search. I mean, you're going after guys you can't get, two guys you use you, you, you to make more money, and you, you end up with Mick mm-hmm. Cronin, who feels like, dang, you know, he coming back to me, but he, he wanted to get the, the – Glamour of being the UCLA coach, he's a California guy, but man, I mean, Dan yeah. Guerrero, know your lane, my man. Yeah, that was a tough one. I mean, you know, they fired Steve Halford on December 31st. You know, they had they had a long time, and it seemed like you know, they had no clear plan. I mean, they chased some big names. You know, they they chased Calipari, they chased J 
Jamie Dixon. They chased Rick Barnes and, and all publicly, you know, like way too publicly. Um, and then to, to settle and settle's a bad word because Nick Cronin's a good coach, but I guess if you see LA, you are settling. I don't know, but, but, you know, to settle for your fourth or fifth choice, depending on who you talk to, that's a tough one. I mean, I, you know, hopefully they learn something from that search. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I mean, it does sound like, you know, the people, the administration at UCLA has learned a little bit about what they need, you know, in Mick, Mick Cronin's new contract. Um, he does have a larger salary pool for his assistants. They are guaranteed charter flights for every away game, which is amazing that they didn't have that before. Um, so I think they're trying to upgrade that thing a little bit. But what just a, a disaster of a search and what just a, you know, kind of black eye for the program. I've talked to a lot of guys about this and, and a lot of guys on the radio. People are saying, you know, they kind of compare UCLA to like uh, the old college basketball, like the 70s of college basketball. And that's where UCLA is. They're no, they're no longer current and modern and relevant. So I think that's definitely uh, an issue and an image image thing they got to fix. Um, and whether Mick Cronin can do that or not, I don't know. Again, you know, Mick Cronin's won. Hey, he, he was at Cincinnati 13 years. He won a ton with the nine straight NCAA tournaments. You know, great. I mean, is he a flashy L.A. guy? Probably not, but we'll, we'll see how this one works out. Now, Cincinnati has hired John Brady and right across the river and just hire him and get over yeah. it, but they're dragging their feet. Frank Martin, I think his buyout caused him not to go, but I just think you should hire John Brady mm-hmm. right across the river. He's done a good job in Northern Kentucky. He'll, he's, he kind of, he knows the area. You keep mm-hmm. the train rolling if you hire the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right, and it's funny. So, and a lot of these schools are kind of – they, they they do this and, and St. John's is doing or did the same thing a little bit here where you know the, the logical choice is right there but they kick the tires on some bigger names you know like yeah Cincinnati kicked the tires on Frank Martin it's not going to work out he's not going to Cincinnati but John Brandon's right there eight miles away right across the river like you said I mean that's that's the guy you need to hire um he'll get it done and the same thing you know St. John's is doing the same thing where you know that, that Chris Mullen thing that was a disaster um didn't work out for him at St. John's you know, they talk about, you know, Bobby Hurley, the ADs coming from Duke and Bobby Hurley. That's, you know, Bobby Hurley's not going, but they got a guy, Tim Clewis, who's the head coach at Iona, right in their backyard, who's done done amazing things at Iona, won everywhere he's been. I mean, that's a guy that they should hire, like, right now to, to get that thing rolling, you know, but a lot of these, you know, a lot of these schools, a lot of these ADs are enamored by the name, um, you know, a, a Bobby Hurley or a Frank Martin or, you know, in a, in a Vanderbilt, a Jerry Stackhouse. Um, you know, when that's not necessarily, you know, the best choice when you go get a basketball guy who's going to win games for you. Exactly. And this is a personal one I want to talk about. It's Cliff Reedy at UMES. Uh, I, they say I'm an yep. interim coach still on their website, but is he, yep. is he in the mix or is kind of he's just a placeholder? So, no, this is actually an interesting story where um, originally, you know, I thought he was not going to be in the mix. Um, they did not have a great season. Um, but from what I've heard now, he is in the mix, and he actually may be the leader there. You know, there's, there's a bunch of other mid-major assistants that have interviewed, um, but from what I heard, I've got some really good sources here that said a lot of those guys' interviews were really short. I mean, you're talking about Division One, you know, head coach. Guys were going in there for like three hours and done. Uh, but but Reed had a, a little bit of a longer thing, and I, and I think, again, according to the people I talked to, he actually may be the leader there, may be able to retain that job. Um, so that's an interesting one. I hope he does it because he's a good guy. Um, throwing in a little bit of a tough situation, but I think you give him some time and it'll be okay. Yeah, because I'll text him and he won't give me a real answer. So, <laughs> so <it's> like, yeah, <laughs> well, I'll give you an answer. <laughs> yeah, like, like <laughs> yeah, I, I've supported you for years, coach. Can I get a real answer? <laughs> like, yeah. Come on, dude. <laughs> yeah. And now mm-hmm. this, this is what this is what this was one the one that kind of showed me. Like, if you remember like, what he he sure did it, you smart. If you smart and come assist to the NC State on the Mark yeah. Godfrey, you got Doc Sander doing the same yeah. thing in Southern Miss. So, which tells me that must not be a yeah. great job for him to do that to go to Nebraska, or Nebraska with with, with Hoy Bird to get more money, probably. But it just says what he feels about the right. job. Yeah, you're right. I, that one that one surprised me a lot. Um, but you're right. I do think he's probably going to make more money in Nebraska. But if you look at what he's done at, at Southern Miss, I mean, this is his best season. They, they've gotten better since he's been there. Um, you know, is he going to try to parlay that into something better? Maybe. I don't know. But, uh, you know, he, he's getting, you know, <laughs> no disrespect to Doc Sadler, yeah, he's getting older. You know, he's in a pretty good situation at Southern Miss. If you think about it, pretty good been, been made. You just won 20 games. Um, you know, why not stick it out? But now he's going to you know, get back to the rat race at Nebraska as an assistant. That's a, you know, it's an interesting move. Um, 
you know, again, I, I'm assuming he's going to use it to, to, to get something better. Maybe something was, was not right for him at Southern Miss, but really a, just a, a curious move. I, I don't understand yeah. that one a ton. Yeah, like for me, Adam, it's like for me going from a host to a co-host. I couldn't do that. Even to give right, me right. more money, right. I like to have my own show, do my own thing. Well, I have I don't say. You know, I don't want to be answering anybody, right. no, getting right. advice and oh, yeah. suggestions. I want to make the decision. I suggest you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, I, I hear you. You're, you're right. And it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter what level you are. Listen, and I spent, you know, 20 plus years as a college basketball coach, right? I was a Division One assistant for, for a long time. and small college division three head coach. And, you know, I had the opportunity a couple of times when I was a division three head coach to, to go back and be an assistant at the division one level. And even doing that, you know, I, I, I've been the boss for so long, you know, even at the division three level, I don't want to, I don't want to go work for somebody now. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely an odd. And again, especially at his age and, you know, who knows? I mean, Fred Hoiberg brought in a great staff there uh, with Armin Gates and, and Bobby Lutz and Doc Sadler. And, you know, I think they'll, they'll do a really good job. So he's in a good situation where they're going to win some games, but you know, definitely an odd, odd situation. And are we shocked that Musselman went from Nevada to Arkansas and got offered going to Nevada to take his Because I, I swore my man Russ Turner was going to get that job. I take some congrats on, on the job. He's like, he didn't really answer me back. But I'm like, he something happened last minute. But I heard he was going, he was going there. So I'm like, okay. So yeah. what happened? I had a whole triangle there. You know, I, I think, you know, with, with, Eric Musselman, like he's done, he, obviously he's done a phenomenal job at Nevada. And I think, you know, it's one of the things that time has come for him to, to make a move. And to be honest, the money at Arkansas is crazy. I mean, he, he's making a ton. Um, and, you know, same thing with Arkansas. Like, I think they struck out on a couple guys. Um, so I think he was kind of in that next next group. I mean, I think they, you know, Arkansas would have wanted Kelvin Sampson. Um, you know, the AD at Arkansas hired him at Houston. Um, but, but I, you know, I really, really think that's a good hire for them. Um, he is, you know, he, he's an energy guy. He's going to bring life to that program. Um, and I think he'll get it done in the SEC. And, it's, you know, he, you talk to every, everybody you talk to about Eric Musselman. They just say, you know, he's a basketball genius. I mean, he grew up around this game. Um, he, he, you know, he knows his X's and O's, but he also knows the other stuff. He knows how to relate to players. He knows how to recruit players. He knows how to – you know, he knows how to, to, to rally a fan base. Um, so I think that's, in my opinion, that's a perfect match, him going to Arkansas, because I think he can really rejuvenate that program. Yes, indeed. Well, hey, Adam, this has been a great day to have you on the show. Man, do this again real soon, man. The coaching carousel is in full effect, man. Like I said, all, all these coaches, I know them. I text with them. It's like it's funny when I read yeah. your site. i am like, yo, what's good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, I love doing that too. Like, man, look, something's going on. It's on hoop dirt. So talk to me. I mean, yeah. I'm not, not going to say I'm tell nobody. Just tell me. You know, it's all good. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. Hey, Alex says, have a great time, man. I'll talk to you down the road, buddy. This was great. Time to have a show again. This was fun. Let's do this again real soon, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I appreciate you having me on. And, and anytime you want to talk college basketball coaching changes, let me know. Love to, love to talk to you. And feel free to text me anytime, too. I'll give you some inside information. Will do, man. Thanks so much, Adam. <laughs> All right. Be good. I'll talk to you. All right, folks. Adam Nelson of HoopDirt.com. Check it out every day like I do. Get the dirt from college basketball on every level. You hear me? Every level, people. Here on the Boss Man Show. We're out. My heart skips skipping the beat. You're not close enough, so that space between you and me, let's lose it. The way you're dancing, swaying to the music, girl, that body and how you move it. Every time you cross my mind, girl, I lose it. Alexa, play the Country Heat playlist. Okay. I think you know what you're doing to me, you got my- With Amazon Music, a voice is all you need. Get tens of millions of songs. Download the Amazon Music app today. All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, time of Boss and Bone. Now, Bone is back, even though a certain coach told me that he got him fired again. And I only rehired him because I wanted to spite him, and that's why I, he, I, he got him fired again. But this coach did not realize Bone wasn't fired. He, he had an excused absence, and is back today. So, Bone Wiggins, I'm going to let you address this certain coach who's very concerned with your whereabouts and your employment status here on, on the show. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to thank you and your staff for rehiring me. Uh, 
I stir my penance <laughs> for the last two weeks. Uh, so I, I come back hat in hand and humbled, and I hope I never get fired again. So hello to my buddy over there, up in the uh, up in the uh, up in the north. Hello, buddy. I'm back. <laughs> exactly. And I, wait, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you all the time. I love how this guy hates me and you and the show, but listens every week. Yeah, it's kind of like those people. Remember in the nineties, and everyone hated Howard Stern. But everyone listened anyway. So it's funny how, like, you hate on a show, but you're probably the biggest fan in, in, in the closet. Exactly. Exactly. Now, Bone, we have a lot of Lakers stories here. One rep- one story is that Kyrie Irving's going to uh, give the Lakers a fragrance meeting. Are you happy about that? Or is that just a cursing to LeBron? Because it's them, him and LeBron made up now. Yeah, I, I'm just I heard about that. I'm shocked that Kyrie even broke the idea of a reunion. Uh, It's probably just a courtesy because I still think Kyrie's coming home back in this area. Uh, But I'm just shocked that he didn't entertain the idea because they ended so thoroughly to the point where wasn't he at a wedding with with other Gold State Warriors and they were clowning LeBron behind his back on film? So it's, it's weird how it's come almost full circle now to the point where he apologized publicly to LeBron. He calls LeBron. He actually gives the Lakers a, a time of day, a July 1st. So it's kind of weird, but I, I don't buy him being a Laker, but it's just odd that he even he even brought an idea of it. Exactly. And now we have reports coming out from Bill Orem that the Lakers president, Matty Johnson, is viewed as a absentee executive, and he comes in for a few days and causes a lot of trouble and leaves other people to clean, clean up his mess. Doesn't that sound like somebody in D.C.? Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like someone in D.C., and it sounds like even someone more personal to me when I was covering the Knicks, uh, Phil Jackson. <laughs> when Phil Jackson was an absentee uh, executive where he was in Montana at the lake house, he was kicking it on, on the beach over here with, over there with, with Jeannie. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's not – it's not there's, there's precedent for that. Uh, I hope it's not true because, I, like I said, I grew up a Lakers fan. I grew up a Magic fan. He's my favorite player of all time. Uh, so to, to hear that he may be a little bit lazy and lax at this job, I find it heartening. I hope it's not true. Uh, I honestly don't think it's true. Uh, I think mainly because I am a fan of him. I don't want to be. I, I don't want to be true. <laughs> yes, indeed. And also, the main player on the Lakers has turned off teammates by not being around while injured teammates. Say that uh, they, how he would come to games right right for a tip off with wine in his hand. He wouldn't be in the locker room. He'll don't talk to the front office. Uh, but young players don't trust him, and the guys just grew more and more away from LeBron after the injury and how he's acting into Anthony Davis trade. So, what are your thoughts on LeBron only showing up to the games right for a tip off, drinking wine on the bench, and talking to executives in the hallway rather than being on the bench supporting his teammates like Rondo well, was? Yeah, I buy it. I, I mean, we, we've known LeBron since his youth, so we know the kind of player that he can be, uh, where 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 he can disengage as fast as anyone ever disengaged from, from a locker room from a team. Remember the first time he left Cleveland when they lost at Boston, and as soon as the buzzer went off, he was already in the tunnel taking off that jersey as if it smelled. Like, he just threw it down immediately. So he, he disengages as fast as anyone. So it's not a shock that it's true. Uh, it's not a shock that if there's the discord between him and the youth and locker because, locker because remember, he's a guy, allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> that one of those guys out that wanted to get rid of the whole hall for Ann Davis. So it's not, it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to hear that the reports are – he is kind of disengaged from the team. And young guys don't trust him. Look at him and so side eye. That one, that one shocked me one bit. I was going to hit him in his face. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you're not a fan of, of, of said superstar. I know you're not a fan. I know you, I know you had your issues with him. And, but you know what? For as good as he is off the floor with issues and, and, and being a, being a man of his word, there are reports, many reports over the years where he's not been a good teammate to guys. Where, where he's where he's left that out to dry, uh, and, and it wouldn't shock me again if, if the reports are true uh, about him disengaging from the team, the team, you know, as right now. 
Well, I have some sourcing because my man's on the, on the team now, Mike Muscala. It's bad. <laughs> I, it's worse than I thought it was. I'll say that. <laughs> Shout out yeah, to my man, Moose. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, with, with that whole thing, uh, honestly, both of those guys might not be back next year anyway. So they might finally just clear the slate and, and get LeBron what he wants. Uh, so if those guys look at him side, side eye and they don't trust him, they might be gone anyway by by this uh, summer. So I mean, it, it's it's it's, it's going to be interesting to see by first what happens. Is Magic going to be uh, at the doorstep? A lot of guys as he was as he was at twelve oh one and with LeBron. So what what, what happens? Yes, indeed. And last, like the I have for you, Bones, is the report is out of the again that Magic Johnson and Luke Walton haven't spoken in weeks, which <laughs> cannot bode well for Luke Walton's future after this season ends this week. I, I buy that. That that and that's one rumor that I can't either confirm or deny. But I would buy that. Everything I got, man. And, and think about it. Luke's been on borrowed time since the very first time that Magic scolded him as a little kid in the office and just berated him and talked down to Luke. I mean, you almost saw writing on the wall then. And now with the year they had and with LeBron being unhappy, allegedly being unhappy with the coaching style, uh, it, I buy it. It's, it's not hard to buy at all. And now we're going to turn to <clears throat> patheticness of our race, on me and you as a queen of color. I pull up to a quick trip here in Georgia, and there was a... <laughs> brother, only in skin only, who was driving a Sierra, a Sierra pickup truck uh, with the rebel flag in the in the bed just flying away and thinks that was okay in the city of Atlanta. Like, do you know what that flag stands for? Do you know what's at Stone yeah. Mountain about 20 minutes east of town? Well, you know what? The battles, the war battles came to the Battle of Atlanta, where they just got destroyed by Sherman's march to Savannah. You know anything about that history, sir? And you pull yeah. up to a quick trip with that flag in the back of your truck bed, and we got off. Look, even the white folk looking at him like he's crazy. <laughs> now, I tell you what, that when I saw the picture uh, you sent, it was disgusting. Uh, just the fact that. Uh, just the sheer ignorance of my brother. Uh, it, it's disheartening. I told you before before the show started. It's just disheartening. It's not even funny. It's just sad and 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 brings a little bit of anger to you. Actually, not a little bit. A lot of anger it brings up. So I I, I don't get where he was coming from. You know the w- one thing. You know I I don't like those skinheads. But I tell you what, those guys are not going around wearing uh, a Black Lives Matter stuff. <laughs> you know you know what I'm saying. Those guys aren't. Aren't crossing the screen. They say true to themselves as exactly. racist. Exactly. So, so what is this brother doing, having that flag of disgust waving so boldly and proud from his truck? I don't know. I don't know who hurt him. Uh, maybe he dated a sister that was just a little too strong for him, and that retaliating against life. <laughs> well, I, I I don't know what his deal is, and I don't want to. Know, I don't know what. It, I don't want to know what his deal is because to me, he's no brother of mine. And he was playing Nickelback. <laughs> well, see, that might be the biggest offense of all. If you ask people out there, the fact he's playing Chad Kroger, but you know, <laughs> but this guy, come on, man! Is uh, it the donkey of the war, of the week award? If they, if Charlemagne can please call that up. Charlemagne sign his due and make it a donkey of the week, please. <laughs> please, yes, please. And Bone, you sent me a Florida man story, which I found very <laughs> interesting. And a Florida man was found dead, along with 29 other corpses, two tons of cocaine, and a fully automatic AR-15. It's like he had a cult, of a cocaine cult or something, and took them all out. I mean, that's old Florida right there. That was, and you were the first for no lie, Hannah God. You were the first person I thought of when I saw that headline. I'm like, this is got to discuss. I mean, this guy was a little Scarface. He watched Scarface probably a little too many times over his lifetime where to get the idea that to form this, uh, as you say, maybe a cult, to form this cult and to have his life go out in a blaze of glory as in the movie. I know somebody's funeral home was very happy. A lot of business. A lot of business. (laughs) (laughs) Because... 
you know, to be a funeral director, you, you have to be a weird person because you cheer for death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're happy when somebody dies. That's, you are a weird <laughs> person, a weird lot. Like you're cheering yeah, death. Exactly. That's what you it's do. It's a weird lot. Exactly. <laughs> it's a weird. It's a weird. It's, it's a weird only if you don't know Florida and the Florida story. <laughs> exactly. And Bone, you're gonna love this Florida man story. In honor of WrestleMania this past week, a Florida man just out the choir stand hit the pastor with a bat while he was preaching. And put him in that glock and made him tap in the middle of service. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I'm, first of all, I'm surprised that there was no Stone Cold Thunder involved. So, so he got creative and he went triangle on dude and when the, the ankle ankle lock tap, huh? So, uh, he, so he it's, it's a little variety. So usually in Florida, you only you always tell me about guys getting Stone, stone Cold Thunder. So this guy went, went a, di- a different route and gave the ankle lock. So I mean, kudos for, for being creative. Uh, but probably not the best right time, right right place kind of thing. <laughs> to like, really do the angle lock. <laughs> like, first of all, why does my man have a bad in the choir stand, though? Yeah. To yeah, jump, on, just... <laughs> jump out the choir stand, hit him with the bat, and put him in the line and make him tap in the middle of service. Yeah, it's only made better if he pulled out a, a, a folding chair and you had Jim Ross and all these. Like, my God, my God. <laughs> We in church. He did it in church. He was doing it in church. He, he's gonna tap my God. Damn it, King. He's the pastor gonna tap. Damn it, King. But he's tapping. He submitted. Like, dude, really? That's the only way it made better. Yeah, and Jim Ross was there, and there's a metal chair, folding chair, and in the, in the area. But I tell you, I, I like creativity. I mean, instead of going stunner, he, he went with the ankle lock. So I, I mean, next we're gonna see probably a Cobra Clutch. Or the RKO. I would pay to see the RKO in church. I think I would. <laughs> I just want to know what made it did the base. I'm going to do a stay in the middle of in church. Now. I'm going <laughs> to pray my bat. Like, I wonder what the other choir members thought when he had a bat in the choir stand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, it's, it's, it's freedom. It's lunatic, but it's freedom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, folks, that is Boston Bone this week. He's back, as we said he would be. He wasn't fired as a certain coach is going to get put out in playoffs, said he was. So, <laughs> I'm just Ain't saying. No case, can, can I just say this whole beef that I don't know where it came from, why he hates this Yankee Doodle Dandy, why he hates him so much, I have no idea. Because if I had a vote for Coach of Year, I probably would vote for this guy. He's coaching probably my favorite player in the league. Uh, he's coaching a guy that I cover with a net in Brooke Lopez, who I really love in New Jersey here. So, I don't know what, what beef. To me, it's comical because I'm always on dude's mind. Maybe prepare for the playoffs in the first round before worrying about me. I think you're guilty of association, Bone. You're guilty of association because the, the guy hates me. So you're guilty of association. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, I you. Hate you. So it's, it's, it's like a proxy. It's my association. I get it. I yeah, get it. it's my price. Like, look here. He, he talks to him, obviously. He must hate me, too. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know what? That's a sad thing. I don't hate dude at all. I don't got time to hate anyone. Like I said, he's probably my vote for Coach of the Year if I had a vote this year, but I don't. But like I said, it's funny how it's turned out this way. But you know what? I will continue being the Yankee Duel Dandy. And I will continue to catch the heat because I think it makes a good radio. Because you know what? This show needs help. This show is so struggling that it needs help. So any help he can give us, I appreciate. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, folks, as Boss and Bone. <laughs> Check us out at our website, BossManShow.com. We'll be right back. 